Hi guys, Squad here, and welcome to a first look of a game called Derail Valley. Now this is a game that came out uh, a month ago, it came out in January 2019, and this is actually a VR game. It's built for VR. In fact, the demo was, uh, still is actually, free on Steam from 2016, I think it was, uh, but it only worked in VR. Uh, this version is actually purchasable now. It's early access. Uh, it's built for VR, but you can actually play it in non-VR. So at the moment, I'm playing it with keyboard and mouse, uh, which is something you can do if you buy it. But I would like to try it in VR as well. Apparently in VR mode, it is super special. Uh, but the reason I want to show you is because it is, it is a fun game. It's very interesting. It is early access, though. There are bugs in this thing. Uh, it's still being built, and it's very restrictive what you can do. But the devs are cool. They've done a cracking job so far, and the plans are superb. Now, if, like me, <clears throat> you're getting a little bit kind of disillusioned with the status quo of train simulators, uh, then this is something that you might want to take a look at. It's got some decent simulation physics in it, and although it only has like two locos that you can drive, a diesel shunter and a steam engine, what is there is pretty realistic and fun. So what I'm going to do in this video is take you through some of the stuff. I'll show you the kind of the interface and the kind of things that you can do with it. And uh, it's going to take more than one video to show you properly what's in the game uh, for sure. But I can give you a good overview, a good first look of, of what there is to do. Uh, you can see me teleporting around at the, at the moment. Because it's built for VR, if you hold down the F key, uh, it lets you teleport around because obviously in VR... Uh, it's quite nauseating if you try to move around, but you can tell teleporting is common in VR, hence why you can do it, which is what I'm doing. Now you can see in front of us um, some of the some of the um, the jobs that we could take from here. This is this particular location. I'll show you where we are in a second, but you can see already some of the things that we can collect and the uh, the you know the platform and track numbers and all the rest of it. Um, it is built in the Unity engine, and if you kind of look around. You can see this is still fairly early days in terms of what it can do. The vegetation is procedurally generated. So although the map is fixed, I'll show you the map now, actually. Here's the map, and you can see I'm moving. Actually, notice as well how the map is actually in the world. Remember, this is a VR game, so it's not actually popping it up. It's actually putting something in the world. As I move around, the light changes on it. Um, but you can see the map. It's 200 and... 50 square kilometers, I think it is, 256 square kilometers. And you can see the tracks that are in there and the different cities, stroke, industries that you can go to. There's also like a, a key in there. Top left, it says diesel service, steam service, and shop. Now, a shop is where you can buy things. You have to buy licenses for vehicles and things like that. And the servicing is where you can um, look after your locomotive so you can uh, if it's a steam engine, for example, you can add water, uh, you can collect some more coal, uh, you can get the the locomotive serviced if you damage it, if there's any wheel damage, you can refuel and all that kind of thing. So you have to be conscious of your fuel levels because you can only um, get a service at certain locations on the map. So that's one of the things that you can do. Also, in terms of actually hauling things around, uh, the way the game works is you can find one of these station offices um, <clears throat> at most locations on the map and these station offices are where you go to pick up new jobs uh, these are the jobs here we'll have a look at those in a second uh, but what I thought I'd, it'd be worth pointing out is this thing here this is the derail valley industry chain now again this is early access this is all work in progress but the way that the game currently works is all of the jobs that it generates are from um based on the industry that's in the game that, it, that you can see in front of you. So, for example, uh, the oil well, which is producing oil, uh, you can go to the oil well and you can take jobs to move oil to the harbour, which then kind of has a knock-on effect on other industries in the chain. Now, quite how far they're going to take this, I don't know, but it is quite a cool thing to see at the moment uh, that there is actually some kind of industrial chain going on and these aren't just kind of standalone jobs. <coughs> you might be asking... Does it have passengers in it? And the answer is right now, no, it does not. Uh, I was streaming this the other day. The developer was in the chat and people were asking him those kind of questions. Uh, you know, is there any weather in the game? No. Is there day-night cycles in it? Currently, no. Uh, is there any plans to put passengers in? Yes. 
so this is very much a work in progress, and they have a Discord that you can go in there and sort of ask questions. The devs are really friendly and definitely worth checking that out. But uh, in terms of jobs, you collect them here, you decide what you want to take around, and then you haul it across the map, as I've already shown you. Uh, you make money. So if I at the bottom here, if I scroll along my mouse wheel, you can see if I click on my wallet, that is how much money I currently have, $8,300. You start with $2,000, and you have to use your money to buy things in the game. So when you come to some of these shops, you can see you can buy for $50 Derail Valley's Beginner's Guide to the Game. Uh, you can also buy how to operate a steam locomotive. So across the bottom here, I've already bought a few of these guides. This is the Shunter Quick Guide. So if we bring it up and click through, it will take us step by step how to drive the Shunter Diesel. You know, turning on the fuse boxes, the ignition, the reverser, the brake, and so on. I'll take you through all of that later, but I'm going to briefly just show you um, the steam, if I can get to it, the steam loco guide, which is this one that I bought here for $50. This gives you an idea how involved it is to drive the steam train in this game. It's a lot more involved than you might think. You've got, a, you've got the regulator, you've got a fire door, you've got to shovel coal into the firebox, light it, keep the door closed, fill the, um, fill the water up, fill the boiler up with water using the injector, uh, check the water levels, observe that steam's been generated, use the roll cutoff, the brake release, the, you see what I mean? And the thing is, while you're hauling stuff, you've got to keep the steam going. You've got to keep the wheels turning. Uh, if you get wheels slip, you need to put the sand down. Uh, you can damage the wheels doing it. You can, you know, take the temperature of the engine too high and cause damage. It's all uh, to play with. But let's start off by actually showing you some... Uh, we'll have a quick look around here. You can see there's nothing much going on. It's just, uh, it is as it is. It's all static. Although because it's VR, you can actually pick things up and, you know, drop them on the floor and that kind of thing. Doesn't really serve any purpose other than a bit of fun, uh, but I'm sure they'll add more stuff later. Now let's take a look at a job. Uh, the The way the jobs work is the more complex the job is and the longer the job is and the heavier the haul, the more money you get paid. Uh, so that's a bit of a clue. Now the shortest jobs that you can do are shunting jobs, which is this one, for example. A shunting job effectively means shunting things around the current station that you're in. As you can see here, it's basically going to ask us uh, to to couple ourselves up to a bunch of cars, move them from I-05 track to L-04 track, um, and then uncouple some more cars at S-03. We're not going to bother with a shunting job. Let's do an actual haul job. Now, if we was to look on the map here, there's a job which goes to, is it this one here? The goods factory in town, where we are now, goes to the food factory in town. So if you have a look at where the food factory in town is, uh, we are at the goods factory in town now, and the food factory in town is just to the northeast of our position. And you can see it's not particularly difficult to get through, to get to. We'll just need to go via the oil well north, bypass that, keep going, and then we turn left and go down to the food factory. If, for example, we were to take this one, which is the harbour and town job. Um, now, a harbour and town is down the south, but if you notice when we leave the goods factory... We can't immediately turn left and head south. We have to actually go west uh, and then go all the way down to the steel mill and then loop back around. And it's actually quite a tricky long drive, that one, which is why the harbour in town pays so much money. It pays 16000 So I think what we'll do is we'll take this one. But this is, no, this is not a simple job. This is 378 tonnes, right? That's quite a lot of weight. But the routing is fairly straightforward. So we're going to take this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk over to the job validator and we're going to say we want this job. So we'll put that into here. Uh, we'll throw that on the ground for a second and have a look at this. This is the job report. Now it says we get a, if we do it in 22 minutes, we get a time bonus. Uh, there is no expir expiration time on this, so we don't need to worry about it. 8,700 uh, base with an 8,700 time bonus. Uh, we'll obviously get penalties on the way, but our potential earnings are 17 grand. Trust me, we're not going to get that. So we'll put that down there because we don't need it. There's only so much we can carry at once. Um, so that's now in our inventory. Anytime we want it, we just press the tab key and it'll bring it up. And we can use the left and right mouse rice rice mouse buttons. The left and right mouse button will take us through the different pages. Again, think about VR because that's what this game is for. If you're in VR. You can bring this up and just swipe it with your hand. It's 
go back to the second page. It says deliver clothing to food factory in town. Okay, so we need to take a couple of the following cars at the station track. 07. We need to couple, remember those serial numbers because we'll need those in a second. What we want to do now is look at the station map. Now the station map gives us details of all the stations, uh, all the tracks in all the stations. This particular map that we want is the goods factory and town. So if we look at the station map, Click through to the goods factory in town, which is that one. Now we've got the, uh, now we've got the list. We can see 007 is what we want. So if we look at 007, we are at, I think we're at S09 at the moment. We can verify that by finding it a sign. Maybe there's one down here. There you go. Just to give you an idea, 09. So you see where we are, 08, 07 is actually here. This is 07, that's 05. So if we walk down here and we look at the actual job itself, which is that one, we should be able to tally up the serial numbers. Now you do need to be careful because often the game will generate things with trailers that you don't need to, to haul. So you do have to be careful, but the CFF 016, uh, so the next, next one should be 017, and so on, all the way down. Let's go to the end and have a look what's on the end there. Is 024. Right, so as it happens, we want all of these. So now we need to work out which way we want to come in. Well, we want to probably come in from down that end. So now we need to go and find our uh, engine, which is all the way over here. And you'll see this is the... Shunter. This is the starting shunter. This is the thing. It's a tiny little thing, but it's going to do some work for us, hopefully. Uh, so if we have a look at the station map again, uh, be very careful when you look at the station map. Down the bottom there, it says SW. That means southwest. Because if you look at the map, there is only one way into the goods factory in town. That's from the southwest. But other stations, that's not true. And sometimes the map orientation can catch you out. So we're going to come in from the southwest there, and you can see that 07 is actually, effectively, it's on a dead end. So we're going to have to take this thing, which is on track, where's the track number? There's 03. Okay, S03, so this is obviously on P01 over here. So we're going to have to, I think, reverse it is going to be the best option. If we reverse it all the way around to 07, and then connect, then we should be able to haul and, and, and get out of here. That's going to be the way to do it. Now, one last thing, and there is a tutorial when you start playing this game, but I'll, I'm going to, I've skipped the tutorial, I'll just show you how to actually do it. You've got to set all the points yourself, and the way you do it is with this thing called the, the junction remote. So if you point in at one of these things, and it can be from any distance, when you click it, it moves the point there, you see? So we're going to need to have it set when we reverse, and then make sure en route that everything is set exactly how we want it to be. And that is why it's called Derail Valley. Because if you get it wrong, you're going to derail and you're going to damage your loco and you're going to damage the, the goods that you're hauling. And currently, you know, there's no penalty if you damage things, but that will come soon. You'll have to pay the price for any damage you cause. So we press F to get in and uh, have a look around. First thing you notice about this is the texturing is really good. If you actually look at the textures here, I think they're, they're very well done. Although outside is quite simplistic in terms of the way things are done currently, inside it's a different story. It's kind of like, if I had to compare this to something, guys, I would compare this to like the OMSI of train simulators, but early access in that it looks fantastic when you're inside the cab. It sounds fantastic. But outside, it's just a little bit, mm. <laughs> you know where I'm coming from with that? It's like the onsie of train sims. However, this is very early access to bear that in mind. So yes, all the dials do work in case you're wondering. Uh, so what we need to do, we need to flick these fuses in order. We need to go left, middle, and then this is the final one that you have to turn on. And then we'll start it up. There you go. And she's fired up. Now, there's some switches we can put on here. We've got the fan. We can put the cab lights on. Remember, it's for VR, so you have to click and hold and move. Everything's geared for VR, so the idea is you can kind of hold switches and turn them. 
We'll put the headlights on. You want to you wanna see the horn? Pretty decent, huh? Uh, and then all the... The thing you need to keep your eye on is the temperature gauge. If we hold too much uphill, the temperature will rise. And if it gets here, we need to back off on the throttle. Obviously, momentum is going to be a big thing to manage. The speed is a big thing to manage. Go too quickly around a corner and you're going to derail. Now, there are some hotkeys you can use um, as well as uh, physically move the switch. So this is the reverser. So that's in the forward position, neutral and reverse. We can use, I think it's a J, K, P, there you go. So that goes forward, J and K, sorry, H and J. There you go. The keys are Y, U, H, J, N, M. Uh, they're kind of like a pair of keys. Uh, so the Y, U will do the throttle, like that. And the N, M will do the brake, like that. So what we'll do is we'll put it into reverse. And we shall, having set the points correctly, release the brake. And we shall engage the throttle. And off she starts to move. Just back off on the throttle, we'll, we'll make sure we control the speed. Now because it is a VR game, you can press the F key and teleport out. And this is one of the things that is kind of fun and unique about this game is you can teleport out and you can jump ahead check the signals sorry check the points and see if they're correct and then if they're not you can set them but you could equally do that from inside the cab yeah you can equally go from here uh, bring up your remote junction now the the key to this is to look at the flag itself so that's basically that white line tells you which direction it's currently going whether it's going to go the long way or the short way so if we can have a quick look at our map sorry the station map we can see that we want to take the outer loop so we actually want to carry on and go left here because if we go on the inner loop it's going to turn us around and bring us back this way so the points are set correctly but obviously when we get over there we need to check those as well so let's speed up a little bit. Now, while we don't, we're not hauling anything, the speed won't matter too much. We can get away with like 20 k's easy around this bend. I've hauled a few things in this game. The last thing I hauled, uh, I was actually streaming it at a time, was a load of iron ore that came out of uh, the iron ore mines, that top right there. And the thing weighed something like 600 tons. And I was doing fairly well, fairly well, until I got um, a few miles out. And I think I went something like 25 Ks around a bend and derailed, like half of my uh, cars just derailed at the back. And that was it. It was like, okay, so that happened. Now. In terms of saving the game, at the moment there's no way of manually saving the game and the game will only save uh, when you finish a job. So when you validate the job at the end, that's at the point where it saves. Anything in between is completely lost. So you've got to bear that in mind. Right, we want to take a left. Sorry, we want to go, yeah, left here. Check what that's on. That's okay, that's on left. And then we want to go left, left, and then immediately right onto 07, I think. So let's get these to switch up. Uh, there's left there, that's correct. And we want to go left there. Like that. And then right. Okay, so we're now set up. So we'll just back off on the throttle. Get ready on the brakes. So this is what we want to hook up to. And then I'll show you how the car thing works. some speed okay so we are now uh, within range of the cars but we're not actually connected properly the way we connect so it says in range now so what we do is we press this here and that hooks up to that entire set now if we wanted to remember i said to you earlier some, sometimes it will give you like a mixed set it will have 
four cards of one thing and then four cards of another. And what you do then is you move this marker here like that to where you want to make the break. And then you press the red symbol there and it will break the connection between those cards. And that's how you can... Quite a bit of shunting work will involve you doing that kind of thing where you'll have to assemble and move things around. Uh, but at the moment, this is what we want. So we need to put the reverser uh, into the forward position. Have a quick look at the station map. So we should be able to more or less go straight out of here now and head off towards the southwest. So we'll release the brakes. And now we're going to start to feel the weight a bit more. Now there's a weird bug at the moment, which might, there, there you go, there's a weird bug at the moment where it kind of visually shows them as disconnected, uh, but they're not, they're actually connected, but yeah, early access for the win. So you are going to see some bugs on the way, some weird things, some weird graphical glitches, but you need to look past that stuff. One of the things you'll see, remember I said to you that the vegetation is procedurally generated? So what that means is occasionally you're going to see like rocks and trees and things like this that have been generated on the track itself. They're just purely visual. They're not actually there. They won't damage your um, your train. Let's uh, back off a sec. I don't want to be doing going too fast through this set of points here. If we could try and hold like ten or so, that'd be I'd be happy with that. Right, so there's going to be uh, points over here that won't be set correctly. In fact, we can go and have a quick look if you want. So when we get to here, uh, as we come along here, this is going to be fine. But then we want to go straight out. So we actually want this to be left. And then that one to be right. There you go. So that's going. It's a bit, takes a bit of getting used to, but it's not been going right here. It's It's not going left. So, so the net effect is it goes straight on and then the same thing down here by going on the left track we're not going down the right track and then we'll go straight out of there so that's what we want but look at this this is so cool look at that how awesome is this Let's jump back in uh, so we've got so that's the sand button so you activate that and it starts dropping sand uh, this will give you an idea if you're if you're wheel slipping. This is the amount of oil you've got. You will have to keep oil levels topped up when you go for service. This is your fuel. Run out of fuel and you get stuck and you're going to have to bring another train over here to rescue yourself. And then obviously you've got the pipe pressures up here. It's a fairly rudimentary, uh, simple kind of shunt to this one, but it does the job nicely. Now, I don't know if, if they're going to allow you to do things like open doors and stuff. Um, I, I'm, I suspect I suspect not initially, because you can just teleport past like that anyway. What you have to bear in mind when you play this game, and, you, and I keep telling you guys, is it's a VR game. It's primarily built for VR. So what we experience in terms of keyboard shortcuts and mice is always a compromise, because it's not built for this, it's built for VR. So what may, you, you know, you will see things in the interface that are just weird. Things floating, floating in front of you with messages. That's because it's VR. Let's have a quick look at the map now, just to see where we're going. That one. So you'll notice here on the map, uh, you can see that this line passes underneath another line. That's that one there. So that bridge is the north-south line on the map, and we're going to, we're currently heading to the west, you see. Now, when we get further on to the west, we're going to head, turn right and head north, and then we're going to go immediately left. We're not going to go into the oil well, because we want to go past that. Each of the towns, if you go to, is different. They all look different. They all have different um, consists outside, unique to that particular industry. So there is that. There are no characters in the game. I've not met any player characters, any NPCs. Whether there's plans to add that, I don't know. As I said, there is no weather in the game currently, and there's no day-night cycle. Um, all of that is planned for the future. Also, the ability to have 
um, real locos in the game is not currently there. They don't possess the license to have, you know, any of your favorite locomotives um, or even carriages in the game. Like, they don't have any license. Everything is just fictional at the moment. Um, but I think they loosely base it on the real world when, when they make the shunter and the steam train. You'll see the steam train. I'll show you that in a future video. Um, but it's not like a it's not like a real world one because they don't have any licensing to do it. Hopefully that will change and we'll start to get some really cool stuff. I don't know if there's any mod support planned either. I think, you know, third party stuff would be a great thing to have. And given that it's Unity. Here's another thing, guys. I actually, the first time I played this game, it also felt like My Summer Car. Like a train simulator version of My Summer Car. And I thought to myself, is this the Unity engine? Because it looks like the Unity engine. And sure enough, it is. Um, so if it is Unity, then I don't see why, you know, mod support, even unofficial mod support like My Summer Car would not be possible. I'm pretty certain we can get something going. There's a visual bug straight away. Now, this is all about speed management. It really is. Uh, you've noticed my speed has started to climb. So I'm going to throttle back there. And you can see my speed is still climbing. Because, guess what? We're going down a hill. Absolutely, one of the most important things in this game is keeping on top of your speed. But you see that graphical kind of redraw then? That's an issue that's going to get ironed out shortly. Okay, I'm kind of happy to go for like 20 at the moment. The, um... You don't really get any kind of warning that things are about to derail. And there's no particular speed that it seems to happen at. It's just something that you have to get a feel for, I think. You do start to notice your locomotive shuddering a little bit when you're about to, um derail but by then it's probably too late because we're hauling freight trains around they don't you know they don't accelerate and decelerate particularly quickly so if you're not in control of your speed this thing can just completely derail which may happen we'll see so obviously there is a time bonus and you've got to weigh that up against um, how quickly you can take some of these corners We are not far away, once you make this right turn, we are not far away from the junction. I think we'll just pick up a little bit of speed. I don't want to go too slowly down here. It's not a particularly aggressive bend. I am trying to learn, like, what speeds I can take these things. I remember the dev saying to me that the, the flat cars, which we don't have, well, we, we do have, but they have containers on the back, the empty flat cars uh, currently are a little bit too sensitive to derailing. So he said watch out for that one. And the only way you can stop the derail really is to just keep your speed under control. Also they talked about um, in the future, I think I asked them is there any plans for a co-op, is it like a multiplayer type experience? And they said that what they would probably look to do is do a two-player co-op initially and see how that went. Now, I think a two-player co-op actually sounds quite fun, um, but they were also talking about, in the future, um, like a proper multiplayer experience, having the ability to have other players be dispatchers in the game. So you've got drivers and dispatchers, and I, you know, that just makes me kind of get quite excited, like the idea of that kind of thing just makes me quite excited. Um, so we'll just have to see, but that's, you know, that's way down the line, I think. Okay, let's get the brakes on. And that is pointing the wrong way, so we'll have to flick that to the right. When you do play this game, the tutorial will teach you all this stuff. You're probably wondering why I've got a lighter. It actually works as well. Uh, this lighter is something that you need if you drive the steam train. This is how you get the, the fire going in the steam train. Uh, same with the shovel. You basically use that to move the coal into the firebox. Uh, the wallet's got your money. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So essentially you've got the map. You've got the, the guides that teach you how to do things. You've got the job. And then the station map, which provides you with all of the, um, 
the diagrams that you'll need when you get to various places. So our destination is food factory in town. So if we was to go back a page or so, that's where we're going. So we'll use that later to figure things out. I'm going to back off on the brake now because we're kind of leveling out a bit here. So we've got to bring in a bit of throttle. Just keep it under 20Ks around here, I think. Yeah, that's fine. What I would like to see is, and I know it's not going to be there yet, but what I would like to see is uh, in these guides, kind of published, or maybe even in the train itself, in the cabin here, like published limits of speeds. Like, what, you know, what speed can I go around certain corners or through junctions? Oh, I, actually, that reminds me. They, the dev did say that they were going to add speed limits on the track. So that will kind of give you a clue as to, because at the moment you're kind of guessing as you drive around, you're guessing what, you know, what speed should I go around this bend? What speed should I go through this point? Um, they, they are going to add speed limits on the track as well. Uh, I'm going to have to flick that, I think. Because we want to go left. Because we don't want to go down to the oil well. Now, momentum is definitely a thing here, so we're going to start climbing now. We'll start bringing up the power a little bit. Keep it under 20. Yeah, you can see how those trees on the line, just don't worry about it. It's not really there. You've got to see past some stuff at this stage. Yeah, down there is the, you can almost see it, there's like loads of pump jacks and stuff where you can, you can get the containers full of oil. But yeah, what I want to do is I want to get my Oculus Rift set up again uh, and give this a go. Because I've not actually done any VR videos for you guys, and that's something that I always wanted to do. So this seems like the ideal opportunity to do that. I think we're starting to go downhill again, so I'm just going to back off on that proper completely. Yeah, we are. Look, we're, our speed is not changing, even though I'm not throttling at all. Uh, I would like if this map had some kind of descent gradients on it so I could see when we're going up, when we're going down, when I need to start to build momentum. Because I have no clue at the moment. You just have to drive around the map and kind of learn the hard way, I'm afraid. But I think, yeah, VR is something I want to try uh, and see what it's like and then make a video on that and let you know how this compares. So I think the next video I'll do on this, we'll probably do a... Think we can probably do a steam train run, I guess. You can see how the steam train works. And then if I can get my rift, dig out my rift bits, we can have a go with that. I also wanted to try job simulator in VR at some point, so maybe we can do that too. Uh, let's get some throttle back up. Just gotta bear in mind that the back end of our train is still going through the um points back there. There we go. Okay, we're clear of that now. So have a look at the map and get an idea about how sharp this turn is. I am being a little bit overcautious, I think. Like, we could probably go a bit faster. Um, but, honestly, if it derails, you, it's just, you're done. Like, that's it. There's no recovery in this game at the moment. I drove a steam train and I ditched it, I derailed it and drove it straight into the water and there's nothing you can do. You've just got to teleport to another station and carry on. There's no recovery options yet. But well, thankfully there's no, there's no uh, repair bill either. See, the other thing is I have no feeling that we're going up an incline other than a change in speed. I would like some kind of uh, either track sign to say gradient or maybe something in here that would give me an idea. Let's pick up the power a bit. Alright, speed's climbing but the wheels are not slipping. I reckon 
we can get away with 25, 30 maybe. They look okay at the moment. But I don't know. Well, I would be interested to hear your thoughts on this game based on what you've seen. And I know it's not polished and it's not finished and it's very early access. But to me, this just kind of gives me that indie feel. Do you know what I mean by that? The, the feeling of an indie game now under development, which is kind of going in the right direction. It's like a, a game made for real train simulator fans. That's what it feels like at the moment. I just hope it carries on in that direction. They're only a small team. There's only a few guys there. I think he said there was five people, I think he said. I don't know if they're full-time or not. So there's only so much they can do, but if you if you do if you do decide to buy into this, jump into the Discord as well, and then you can you know help them to test it, give them suggestions, that kind of thing. Because I think that's what they're looking for. Funnily enough, the developer, um, I started streaming this on Saturday, I think it was, and the developer was in my chat within like 10 minutes. And it turns out that he's been a fan of my channel, my YouTube channel, for years. <laughs> How bizarre is that? He said he was going to send me the game, but he wanted to add a bit more to it before he did. Uh, but I found the game because, because I saw my good friend the Northern Alex playing it. He was streaming it, and I thought, what the heck is this? You know, I didn't come across it. I think I'd have probably dismissed it because it said VR only. Um, but it's not VR only. And he was playing it, and I thought, I'll have a look at that. So I installed it, I bought it, installed it, tried it out, I thought, yep, I'm going to stream this. And that, and then, then he just, the developer just joined the stream and just chatted away, it was great. And uh, we just played it and the fans were asking loads of questions. But if you ask your questions, uh, post some comments with any questions you've got, I'll have a read and when I do the next video, I'll try and answer what I can. But I'll tell you what, look at the water. For all these graphics, they actually got the water pretty good. It's not bad. Right, 25 over a bridge. Uh, here's a cool thing about this game. You can just do this and go up a hill and watch your train go by. How awesome is this? You gotta love this. The ability to do this is just brill. And then when you're ready, jump back in. There is a bunch of options that control how much vegetation you want. But, I mean, I've got 60 FPS. Like, no problem at all with FPS right now. Maybe once they start adding more graphics, maybe it'll, you know, struggle a bit. But right now, yeah, and some weather as well. That's the other thing. At the moment, the graphics are fairly simplistic. Let's have a good look where we are on the map. So we are here, we're coming up for a left turn, so we need to get the junction remote out. Make sure we're... Signal left, and back off on the throttle. And kill some speed. Still getting a feel for how much to uh, brake and how much to accelerate, but... Seems about right. Just take it easy through here. Obviously, these trees shouldn't be here, so don't worry about that. Looks like I overbraked it a bit. Of course, the danger here is like if you slow down too much and then you throttle up, you might start to get some wheel slip. I think this is a climb, it just doesn't look like it. See, so there's actually there's actually some challenges within this game that are not immediately apparent. Um, a lot of them are to do with the station maps, and you know, here's the other thing that you can do. You can have more than one job on, on the go as well. Hang on a second, draw my speed. You can have more than one job on the go as well. So if you take, 
for example, um, you might have a job which takes four cars, you know, down south to the steel mill, but there's a second job you can take from the same place that takes a different four cars, you know, maybe the next stop down, maybe just a bit further down. You can consider taking both jobs at the same time. What you can then do is navigate your way around, um, navigate your way around the station to collect both consists together. So basically, do your own bit of shunting. Second. Assemble, um, assemble your train. I don't like look at this bend. Assemble your train and then take it down and drop them off. You know, you might have to navigate into one place, drop, drop the first, the, like the last four off the back. But the way you assemble your train needs to be thought through from the way that you want to like deconstruct your train as you get further down. See what I mean? And even when you got to the first stop, you could look at picking up a second job and kind of kill two birds with one stone almost. So there is some hidden complexity to it all. I think we're through that junction. Let's have a quick look at the map. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we're about to go into a tunnel. It's got some fairly sharp turns. It looks like it might be a steep drop down to... I can't see at the moment, but behind this hill is where we want to go to, I think. To the food factory. Let's just keep the speed under control. Um, right, now is where we want to start looking at this thing. Because when we get to the food factory, we want to t uncouple at track I-04. I-04 on here is not listed, so it will be track 4. They're just mislabeled in places, so it's SO4 on this. Now, remember I was saying to you about the orientation of the map. We're going to be approaching from the northeast, right? So on the station map, the northeast is actually at the bottom of the map. So we're going to come in from the bottom of the map there, and we want to go to 4, which means we want to take our first left, first right to, into SO4. So that's what we're going to have to set things up to do. We're starting to pick up speed, but I'm, I'm quite happy just keeping it under 20 through here, I think. This is quite a declination going on. And having come this far, I don't want us to derail, guys. This is quite a sharp bend, and if I derail, frankly, we're going over the side. Down there. Get some more brakes back on. And don't forget, just because your loco has gone through that bend, the rest of your train still has to go through that bend. And any one of those cars can derail. That might be the food factory down there in the distance. Let's have a look outside. How cool is this view? Look at this. Actually, I mean, it's quite picturesque, really. Think about it. Okay, slightly panic break there because um, I felt like we were picking up way too much speed. As that bend got, like, ridiculously sharp. Speed steady. Let's back off now. So I'm just really concentrating, guys, because... And, and this is the thing you'll find if you play this game, is it does demand your concentration. The, the penalty is... It's pretty unforgiving. Uh, the penalty is quite high if you get it wrong. It is so easy to derail your train by doing the wrong thing. Just one 
lapse in concentration and the whole thing will just derail. Right, okay. I'm happy with that. Still going downhill. Uh, looks like I've got a right turn and then a left turn. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of speed. It's quite a long bend, so we'll do like 20 or so. Now, here's the thing about these freight trains. When you... When you're going downhill like this, it's all about managing the brake and managing the momentum and the energy of the of the of the train. If we was to take the same journey and come the other way, it would then be managing momentum and trying not to get wheel slip and trying not to overheat the engine. So you get a different problem when you go back on this map the other way. So it's worth it's worth remembering now that the trip from if you like the oil well to the food factory, he's primarily downhill. So if you ever find yourself coming the other way, you know you've got to manage the energy going upwards. It sounds obvious, but there's there's no other information on the map to tell you which way you're going. There's no contour lines or anything to understand if you're going up or down. Yeah, we are need to get ready soon, so we'll get ready with the remote junction because I don't know at what point we'll be able to see them. But we want to make our first left and then first right. Now, hopefully that particular track will be empty, so we'll be able to drive straight through. If it turns out that it's not, there is a possibility that we'll have to sort of drive straight past and reverse back into it. We'll have to see. You never know until you get there. Okay. That is on a left. 15's good. So we're going to go left and then first right, remember. I can't see because this tree. We'll jump out and have a look. stop it here we're just going to stop and take take stock of the situation because i think it's this track we want but i want to check yeah i04 you see on the uh, on the station map it says s04 so this is the one we want so we want to get into here so we want to take a immediate left And then immediate right, and that will bring us on to track four. Better to just take a second. Um, you know, you'll only lose like a little bit of money for time bonus. That's what you're after. But it's better to get onto the right track. And as you can see, it's completely empty. So that's fine. And this is the food factory. There will be a white building, which is a station building. We'll go and find that in a second. You can see there's a shunter over there. Uh, what's that? Oh, there's the station building there, I think. Uh, the steam train is in a couple of places. It's not here by the look of it. I'm trying to think which uh, stations I did see the steam train at. I think the oil well was one of them, actually. Double check, track four. Well, we managed to get here without completely binning anything. And what we'll do is we'll go and find the station, go to the job validator and throw the job in there and we'll get paid. It's quite a long train, so the back end of it's only just starting to come through though. If we stop around here, it should be fine. Should 
do it. Okay, we'll set the brakes to maximum. We shall disconnect from there. Just to be double sure, we'll just pull away slightly. There you go. So, brakes to max. We'll turn the lights off. We'll turn the fan off. And let's see. There's a stop. Like that. And then flick the circuit breakers. Everything is now off. And we'll take a run down here. Okay, that's not the building I'm looking for. Where is the building? Oh, it's actually two shunters around here. Is that it? Nope. Okay, nothing's labelled at the moment, so I don't know where the station office actually is. Hmm. Interesting. Where do we get paid? <laughs> ah, here it is. We drove past it. Blimey. There it is. That's our train. It's in here. Right, station office. Now, they all have different things. This one's got the um, thing here, but whether it'll have a service or not, we'd need to look at the map for that. But what we need to do is bring this, pop over to the job validator. We get a job completion report and some money. So we'll take our money and put it over there for a second. That big wad of cash. Uh, move cars, and we did it in 40 minutes and 31 seconds. Uh, elapsed time was 42 minutes, so bonus time, 22 minutes. So we actually got uh, some bonus money, I think. Oh, no, we didn't get any bonus money. Wait, I thought that says 17 grand. Hang on a sec. Oh, it said 8,000. No, we didn't get any bonus money. Hardly surprising. I took my time just to show you guys. So if you pick that up with the wallet, there you go. That's how you put your money in your wallet. Eight grand in notes, guys, into your wallet. What a fat wallet that is. So yeah, we didn't get any uh, bonus because we just, you know, I took my time so that we could actually just finish it properly. Um, so that's that's pretty much that. That is a first look at Derail Valley. I think if you love trains, you should definitely check it out. It's not that expensive to buy. I think it was like £15, but it is early access. It's built for VR, but works without VR. I'm using it without VR now. Uh, there's only this shunter and a steam train that you can drive at the moment, and it has a rudimentary industry. But if you was to buy into this game, I would say that you're buying into it because of what it can become. Uh, and don't forget to join their Discord server and, and chat with the devs because they're all pretty friendly down there. So I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments, just let me know. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the vid. And uh, I shall do another video where we'll take a look at the steam train and uh, see how we get on. Take care, guys. Happy training.